Hey guys, it's Cass, and welcome back to Season 2, Episode 9 of our Minecraft Hardcore Series. <laughs> this one, you see me taking some damage <laughs> as I am building out of dirt. And the goal, just like the title says, is to be making a sheep farm inside of a giant sheep. So that's what you see me kind of laying out here with the dirt. And as great as dirt is for scaffolding, it's also for helping me like conceptualize builds. In hindsight, maybe I didn't need to do as much as I did with dirt uh, because I feel like it made it more time consuming to then have to take all the dirt down um, before I could turn around and kind of change everything out with, oh gosh, I used a combination of wool and concrete powder, concrete, quartz blocks. Um, I think I also used for like the face and the feet of the sheep, which currently you see me making out of dirt right now, but then I end up making them out of stripped birch and stripped oak logs for that like texture and slight color difference. And here's <laughs> kind of where I left a good portion of the base of it out of dirt. But I think it's pretty set and it's pretty much a deal <laughs> that I've made with myself. If I'm going to be making a farm of any kind, it absolutely needs to be made in the jumbo version of that thing. Now, I realize I didn't make the bee farm inside of the bee, but the big giant bee is housing all of the honey and honeycomb related things. And yes, my giant beehive is my um, enchantment area, but I think for sure, moving forward, I think if I make any type of farm, I need to make it with inside, inside, with inside? That sounds weird. I need to make it inside of the item that it is, which I think would be fun down the road if I figured out making a shulker farm or making an enderman farm, which I don't know if you can do that in the end. But I think it could be a cool concept depending on how it kind of works out. But I just keep chugging along. This <laughs> took so long to make and I think it was just because of the continuous need to gather the white materials because I believe the sheep is like 13 by 13 as far as his, like as far as as far as his torso is concerned and then you have to think he has each of his legs that you see me building here and then he has his head as well on top of all the redstone components um, and everything that needed to go inside of the sheep. But this has really helped further my appreciation of birch, which is a block that I've, and a wood type I have never liked. I've avoided like the plague, but it's such a good neutral light tone for all the work that I've been doing, which is awesome. Could you imagine if I would have just not stripped them? How funky his legs would look with just the white and black texture <laughs> with the oak mixed in. <laughs> Taking some steps back and appreciating, realizing I forgot to strip these ones. <laughs> And then taking another step back and I put this block here just so I could always have like a vantage point to keep viewing everything from. But I'm getting like my minecart, my hopper minecarts there. I have a bunch of hoppers. 
I was going to pull my sheep over from my farm by the village, but I just trapped two out here and just began breeding them. So I didn't have to travel with them across the land. But I realized one of the components, I believe it's the, is it the dropper? It's, I don't know, it's one of the items that you need to make the auto sheep shear farm situation. It needs quartz. And uh, you see me making some golden leggings. I think they're unbreaking protection and I do put mending on them. Um, but you know what that means if I'm putting on gold pants it can only mean I'm heading to the one place that I oh has fire protection that I'm um not excited to go and I kind of panic a little bit <laughs> you see me here just being like oh I'm not ready but I realize I just have to do it I just have to do it and get it done I felt like it was a pretty easy in and out made sure I took plenty of blocks with me I don't know here I was procrastinating <laughs> just like stressing out about going in but after I feel like everything's organized we go in And I feel like I spawn in the worst biome. So my biggest concern right off the bat before anything else is building some kind of shelter so magma cubes and gas and everything in the moment cannot attack me. I am glad that I am attached to a structure of some kind and I'm not just spawned in floating over the lava basically because that would have... Um, not been fun but you see me kind of towering my way out trying to slowly <laughs> get everything kind of set up so that I can branch out a bit and start looking for some quartz unfortunately I didn't I wasn't in here very long at all I got the pieces of quartz that I needed and I was out and then I came back in here and originally I messed this up because originally I was just going to have a hopper minecart run back and forth and collect all of the wool and then just dispense it. But then I realized I was building it two different ways. As you can see, putting like the chest down and that one's misplaced, but don't worry, I fix it. But I was... I don't know, I don't, I was like trying to build two different farms here where I had made the powered rails to have the minecart go back and forth, but then I, what I really wanted, which is why I'm putting the chests down, is to have each one be individual with the hoppers here and then the rail and then the minecart, the hopper minecart sitting on top so when the sheep is sheared, it just automatically drops in. So I have to build this whole thing up inside the sheep to also bring in grass blocks and then I have to transfer the sheep in and it is kind of a headache because I start dyeing them when I start putting them in and then I have to re-dye them anyway. But you can see me crouching and putting my hopper minecarts down. That way they will be able to collect the wool and push it out to the chests for each sheepy. And then I'm building all of this up where I end up, where I would like bring in the grass blocks and stuff to try to get the grass spread because obviously the sheep need grass to regrow their hair, their wool their wool <laughs> and then I'm coming in and placing the is this an observer I don't know exactly and then our redstone dust 
and this is me trying to get the sheep in and it's gosh it's such a mess and blocking a bunch of them in here and just continuing to breed them i should have just done that from the beginning they were so difficult to get them to come up inside um, because then like i said i have to end up re-dying all of them anyway but in the long run we get it all worked out and i know originally i was pretty anti making a ton of farms in this world but i realized clearly i lean very heavy on the wool to make the farms or not the farms to make the builds that i'm making so i just need to get ahead and i have this entire side done here from black to dark blue so we go black gray light gray white pink magenta purple and blue And I'm finishing up the back little foots of the sheepy. But you could see that I'm starting to put in the white and getting all of that done. It just took so long. <laughs> Not only gathering the materials, but then going back and removing, I was going to say the wood, but the dirt to be able to build out the sheep. I'm kind of trying to alternate everything again to give it the texture and the look. I could have just done it all with one specific block or all concrete or whatever, but I just, I really liked the way that I did that with the B. Um, I'll I card that video. But I really liked the way that I did multiple different blocks that were yellow for the texture difference. And there's another little progress shot. You know, and as with building, you gotta do stuff and then take a step back and look. And then go build and then take a step back and look. But then I'm towering up to keep getting rid of all of the dirt underneath him and replacing it with all of the white blocks that I have. And this block of dirt here um, is the height of the sheep. Like that's as high as I need to go for kind of his back and his shoulders. So that's what those corners of the dirt blocks represent. And so much progress has been made. It's so cool to take a step back and see that. And yes, at this stage, all I needed to do was build in the face, kind of talking about the sheep and what his cute little face looks like, and I need to make that there. And here's where that process starts. While my little sheepies are getting sheared the whole time. Which will come in so handy for the builds that I have planned moving forward. And another progress shot where most of his face is done. His face is wide, if you notice, and I have to adjust it so it's fixed here. Um, but originally it was two blocks too wide, so I had to completely shave down the sides of his head and his body to fit, which was not fun and took a lot extra time. Um, but I just had miscounted while getting him going. But look at how cute he turned out. <laughs> I'm so happy. With how it looks, I think I'm eventually going to go back in and spread out 
and random colors on the sheep so he's not just white but i incorporate the colors within but we shall see that's possibly going to happen in the future but and i love my little magenta sheep coming up here i was so happy with my bee my village is over there and then this big old fat sheepy <laughs> but Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Hardcore where we built this absolutely massive sheep that is fully containing our automatic sheep farm. Sheep shear farm? Is that how you would say that inside? But hopefully I will see you guys in the next one.